critical thinkers, public speakers, and they debate. And we have doctors, we have nurses, and midwives. But you're the one who read the article and said that yes. Introducing I Debate TV Championship, where the best schools in Rwanda battle against each other, resolving conflicts without resulting to violence, solving problems creatively using debate. This is I Debate TV Championship. I debate TV championship. We are here to witness uh, the debate finalists. That is Growly Academy and Mother Mary International School Complex uh, battle for uh, the debate championships of uh, this year. Now, my name is David, and I'm going to be your host uh, for uh, today. Now, it has been an extraordinary journey right from the very beginning. We began with uh, 16 schools, and these. Uh, two that we have today uh, debated their way through and they're here for uh, the finals. Now, before we proceed, let's meet our professional judiciary panel who are here to uh, be giving the verdicts um, today. Now, first, you may know him as a comms guy. Uh, joining us is blogger and poet, Mr. Bruce Inwari. Round of applause. Uh, next up, he has been with iDebate for quite a while, and his efforts uh, have been a significant uh, contribution to iDebate Rwanda. Joining us on the judges panel is Mujisha Emmanuel. And lastly, but not least, is uh, Mr. Fred Karumba. And also joining us on the panel is our timekeeper, the beautiful lady Shamira, who will be keeping the time uh, for us. Once again, uh, let's welcome uh, the judges with a round of applause. Now, our motion for today. The topic that uh, the two sides will be battling is this house believes that the primary aim of the criminal justice system should be rehabilitation and not uh, re retribution. And I can honestly say that we can't wait uh, to see what the debaters uh, have uh, installed for us. Now, representing the proposition or the affirmative is uh, Growly Academy. Let's give them a round of applause as they stand up. They are ready to tackle this from all sides. Now, that team is made up of Stella Teta. A round of applause. They have uh, the only man on the team, Brian Izere. And Perfect Umulinga. Yes, and uh, the opposition, or the negative, we have with us uh, Mother Mary International School Complex. <laughs> now, that team is comprised of uh, Cindy Cassandra Ineza, a round of applause, Davin Uase, and Leslie Isaro Isim. Yes, now, as, as I said earlier, these uh, two teams would not be here if it went for their coaches. So if uh, both of the coaches of these two teams would just stand up for uh, recognition as well. The coaches of uh, both sides, please stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. You did a wonderful work. And now your teams uh, are in the finals. You can have your seats. All right, so now the moment of truth uh, has arrived. Now that everything is in place, I'd like to leave it over to the judges who will commence the debate for today. Judges, take it over. So we are going to start our debate. And uh, one thing I would like to highlight is just time. 
the first speakers are going to have five minutes, and the remaining will have four. Then the reply speech will have three minutes. So our timekeeper will be giving signs as you flow through the debate. We would like now to call upon the first speaker from the proposition side. Before I start my speech, I want to thank uh, iDebate, first of all, for having us here. It's been a long journey, but we are very thankful for being here. It's been hard, tears, sweat, sleepless nights, but we're finally here. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my family and all of our teammates' families, uh, our friends, the whole school and the school administration who have been supporting us from the very beginning. And uh, we hope all of this goes well, and yeah, I start my speech. 1755 before Christ, Hammurabi's Code of Law. If a man put out the eye of another man, his eye shall be put out. Retribution. You know, living in the past will eventually rob us of our future. Good afternoon, my name is Arstela Tetero, and I'm the first speaker from Team Proposition. Now. The motion today is this House believes that the primary aim of the criminal justice system should be rehabilitation, not retribution, with the keywords of the motion centering around four words. Firstly, being primary aim, the most important long-term intention to achieve. Secondly, criminal justice system, a system of law enforcement and all parties that deal with apprehending, convicting, and sentencing those suspected of crimes. Thirdly, rehabilitation, a theory of punishment that prevents crime and corrects offenders by altering and understanding criminal behavior. And last but not least, retribution, a theory of punishment that when an offender breaks the law, justice requires that they suffer in return, and that punishment is directly proportional to the crime. Now, Mahatma Gandhi once said, living by the standards of an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. Every criminal justice system in the world desires of a country where there is reduction in crime, desires of a country where there is a safe environment and desires of creating better people for the society. That is the purpose of, the, of there being a criminal justice system in the first place. Now, Hammurabi's code or retribution is delusional and does not help us reduce crime because the concept itself is driven by revenge. It's driven by heart, it's driven by emotions instead of logic and mind. Um, it, it contradicts so much to the way rehabilitation works. And this is how rehabilitation works. We have counseling, we have correcting, we have social work. We understand criminal behavior, we understand the root cause of a crime, and we find the best solution to that crime. And through understanding the root cause of a crime, counseling was uh, introduced, uh, social work was introduced to repair the damages caused by offenders, and now, through rehabilitation, Norway stands at a recidivism rate of 20%. That is how rehabilitation is helping us reduce the rate of recidivism. But in, on retribution, in the, on, on the other hand, according to BBC, take for example United States, it has a retributive justice system. It, um, a man called Matthew Brandon, who works in criminology, said 90% of criminals will be released out of prison, and 67% of them will re-offend in a time interval of three years. The reason to why is this. You are not tackling the reason to why there is crime in the first place. You are warehousing mental illnesses. You are warehousing what is actually driving crime. You are not understanding it. Hence the reason to why retribution will never and has not um, contributed to reducing recidivism. Now, this brings me um, to what this brings us to what, does, what, is actu what do we actually want in the, long, in the long run? Do we want to achieve just punishing people or do we want to achieve restoring the offender? That is what we want to focus on right now. Now, this brings me to our second argument, which is long-term sustainability. What will actually work in the, wrong, in the long run? The reason why we're so against retribution is because we have been there. We have gone that, that path. After the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, Rwanda ad re adopted retribution whereby it killed offenders in regional stadium, those who participated in the genocide. But the thing is, we dropped that kind of mentality because there was no future for the country that killed according to the crime. Now, offenders are being rehabilitated, and we are also reconciliating with, with the society. That is helping us um, reconciliate with the society. Um, this is the reason to why we adopted unity and reconciliation and not revenge. Uh, for example, if uh, retribution was really that effective, how do you justify the fact that 
It doesn't provide sustainability, by the way. How do you justify the fact that countries such as Afghanistan and Guyana are countries with the most retributive justice systems, including the death penalty, but they rank among the highest in criminal rates in the, around the world? The reason is because you are not killing the crime. You are killing the criminal, and you want to kill the crime. We want to understand the crime. So uh, with all of this said, it's coming down to um, what, we, what, to what we actually want to achieve, what is best for society. Um, so, uh, as I conclude my speech, for today's debate, the winning team is the team that will be able to prove what is best for society and the system, and we believe we are that team, as justice doesn't aim at vengeance or deserving or proportionality, it aims at what is best for society. Now, try a crime, you end the criminal, treat the environment, you end the crime. Proud to propose. I'm ready for your questions. Um, thank you. Um, you talked about um, knowing, uh, knowing the story of the offender. Can you really know a story of a criminal? Yes, you can. Through rehabilitating them, which is not something I would think you would so know because you are you not doing it. you think a criminal it. is going to open up to you, giving you the opportunity of rendering them guilty to yes, the Yes. As I told you through rehabilitation, we have stages. It is a process. It's not something that is going to come directly. A criminal is not just going to uh, throw themselves at you, which is why we, we describe it as a process. The, it's, we are correcting them, and we are rehabilitating them, and we are cancelling them. And through our process, we show them... What's the basis of knowing that their story is true? What do you base on knowing that the story is true? The credibility is this. The crime coordinates with a circumstance. And the way we know it, you are, it's like asking a doctor, how do you know that a patient is sick? And how do you know that a patient is suffering from a yes, particular... Um, how are you going to tell that the patient won't fall sick again? What is the assurance that the patient will not fall sick again? Oh, thank you very much. The, the thing is, there's something called meta-analysis and utili utilitarianism mm -hmm. that indicates the fact that if, let's say, let's take this very simple case study. When a patient is sick and a doctor treats them, right? Mm -hmm. The doctor, after providing the necessary treatment, he is sure that the patient will not fall sick again. And if the patient will, will, will fall sick sure again... You you are in the body and you're, you know that the patient is not going to fall sick again. Yes, exactly. You know the Which is system. why the rates themselves uh, show themselves that so they won't that the be offending again. the body of the patient. They know that the body will not fall sick again. Yes, through rehabilitation, we much. are the you ones about, guiding patients. You talked about we're having... Um, uh, low recidivism rate, what are the actual causes of recidivism? The actual causes of recidivism is the fact that people are, are re, uh, neglecting the fact that there are circumstances that guide criminal, criminal behavior, which is what retribution stands for. Well, when we say uh, understanding recidivism, a tendency of, of a criminal reoffending, the reason to why there is recidivism in the first place is because some people do not, uh, some uh, justice systems do um, not actually understand. Okay. So you want to say do not actually understand the reason to why there's crime in the first place. Rehabilitation is the yes. treatment to recidivism. Yes, exactly, to reduce Thank recidivism. You very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, honorable speaker from the proposition side. We'd like now to call upon the first speaker from the opposition. Um, good evening, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Cassandra. Um, I'm from the opposition side, first speaker, but before I comment, um, I'd first like to thank, um, obviously, God for helping me reach here, and um, basically the whole Holy Family. And I would first like, I also like to thank my brother. He's really the one who motivated me to go with debate, helping me with research, and um, if you watch this, um, bro, thank you, you're the best. Now, <clears throat> I'm moving on with my uh, speech. Now, um, dear judges, as we can see here, um, first, okay, first off, um, I'm Cassandra, first speaker of the opposition side, Davin as second speaker, and Leslie as third speaker. Now, it seems as though the proposition side is living through rose-colored glasses. They're not really seeing that you cannot, you cannot change a criminal, which is why we, as the or opposition side reject the notion that this house believes that the primary aim of the criminal justice system should be rehabilitation, not retribution. Before I go on to explain why, I'll first start by defining the keywords, redefining them anyway. The primary aim being the principal objective, as in the first question the criminal justice system should ask is, how do we account for the crime, or what can we do to bring justice to the victim, not how do we help the offender stop committing crimes, or how do we help the offender become a better citizen? This could be 
uh, asked later on and not emphasized on. And the criminal justice system is a network of government and private agencies intended to manage, accuse, and convict criminals in order for them to integrate back into society. Rehabilitation is the reformation of a, pris of a prisoner so they can reintegrate back into society. Retribution, also known as the proportionality theory, is a legally authorized approach made to a prisoner solely by the seriousness of the crime committed, meaning the punishments are proportional to the seriousness of the crimes committed. Now, we'll be talking about how rehabilitation is inapplicable and how retribution achieves the three goals of the criminal justice system as a primary aim. And um, we'll be basing on three things. These are the three goals of the criminal justice system, convicting and punishing the guilty, protecting the innocent, meaning victims and the society, helping the guilty stop reoffending, and um, we will show you, dear judges, that when retribution is used as the primary aim and rehabilitation, the secondary aim of the criminal justice system, this achieves the three goals. The proposition side here um, told us to see um, what what will help what to make um, what to help the society. Well. Um, this will obviously help the society, and what they have to show us is how their plan man will manage to achieve the three goals of the criminal justice system, and how exactly they're trying to make it applicable. Now, moving on to my point, um, um, one of the reasons why we rehabilitation cannot be used as the primary aim of the criminal justice system is because it can it is inapplicable as a primary aim. The criminal justice system mainly consists of three things. One uh, is the police, the courts, and the corrections, such as the prisons and rehabilitation centers. These are the three stakeholders. Will, the three stakeholders will not abide to this change from retribution to rehabilitation as a primary aim. This is mainly due to political influence, culture, and economic intervenience. Now, um, we have seen we have seen conflicts between these stakeholders, such as police brutality, when the police does not abide to the court. And how how will you honestly manage to make such countries like Afghanistan or North Korea a bid to this change? I mean, it's it's inscribed it's inscribed in their culture, in their blood. I'd even say. I mean, we we've seen the Taliban stop girls from going to school, and you're trying to tell me that you're going to bring rehabilitation in their criminal justice system, and you think that's going to work. <laughs> anyway, um, and let's not forget that the, these so-called rehabilitation centers are so expensive. I mean, if you've seen the Norway rehabilitation centers, it, look, it, it looks like a villa. I mean, you could go there for vacation. And not to forget that um, the, no, the normal prisons, I mean, uh, they, they like to call it the the tor the torture pris prisons um, is, is are way less costly than the rehabilitation centers, which is why this is inapplicable. And um, real quick to refute what the first uh, proposition side said, saying um, an eye for an eye um, is retribution. Um, she ma basically wanted to say that it's retribution, right? Yes. So um, just to let you know, an eye for an eye is revenge, and revenge is definitely different from retribution. And um, you talked about knowing the root cause of a crime, basically trying to say that the past of the criminals it is what makes them um, commit those crimes. But let us not forget that there are good people that have had bad childhoods, but that ended up helping society. Let's take the example of Oprah Winfrey, who went through abuse of her by her own, and now she's helping people come out of poverty. And you're just trying to make excuses for, for the crimes that they're committing. And um, y yes, uh, and, to and about the recidivism rates, what the reason why they're so high is because of the criminal history, geographical environment, and age discharge from jail. You're trying to compare. You're trying to compare the states of America to to Norway, and they have completely different history. So that doesn't really come up as a uh, as um, believable point. Um, with that, I. And uh, before, I for before I move on, um, let's not also forget that this doesn't achieve the three goals of the criminal justice system. Obviously, if something is not applicable, how can it achieve the three goals? Thank you. Any questions? Um, so how is Oprah helping those people? Isn't it through rehabilitation? Isn't it through, isn't it through no, counseling she, them? she just gives them money, then... Yeah. Do you agree that United States, United States is one of the countries that have more of uh, crime rates? So the United States is a, what do you mean? I mean, there are America, a lot of states America, in, America. in America. Yeah. yeah. You agree? Then what are those types of states? Like, what, 
what are the crimes that are located into America that are not located into Norway? I'm talking about the history of the country. Unless you don't, uh, yeah, you don't like study history in your school. I mean, they have different backgrounds, so you can't compare it. Uh, you talked about Afghanistan not being able to adopt a rehabilitative uh, due to the measure. due to the current government. Yeah, that's okay. Doing it, then yeah. how do you justify the fact that you are helping society when you have a retributive justice system, but their crimes are at an all-time high? How we're trying. That? We're trying to look at something that everyone can apply. We're not just looking at three, four countries. We're looking at the whole world. And if you can't bring this rehabilitation as primary aim, then what is it good for? If only some countries use it and others don't. What will retribution help Afghanistan to achieve? I mean, its that's 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 how they solve crimes. That's how they, that's in their blood. I mean, that's what they do, and that's its primary. That this is when retribution is used as its only aim. But what we're bringing here is retribution as a primary aim and rehabilitation as a secondary aim, meaning coming later and not emphasized on as much. So um, so you are saying we should put the society at stake just because of political... Actually, you're the ones putting society at stake. Since rehabilitation, we're not really sure if it changes the criminal. Since my second speaker will get to this, we, th there's no scale for change. I mean, how do you know whether someone has changed from 1 to 10? They can okay. just go back, pretend to have changed, then go back and commit crimes, but this okay. time more discreet. Okay, we gave you an example of uh, like how rehabilitation actually worked. So we, we did not I can also you give you examples of how retribution of a country works. Where retribution, because we showed you Afghanistan, uh, the country you're talking about. Uh -huh. Retribution has not helped it at all. And you're putting the people's uh, health at stake just because they're We, we are saying that rehabilitation cannot be applied because some countries can just not transition from retribution to rehabilitation. How do you make retribution real in terms of implementation? We're saying we are not dismissing rehabilitation as a whole. We're saying that it can come in later, but not you, what you guys are bringing to the table here is removing completely retribution. We're not, okay? Uh, why can't some countries trans has, has get a, transla a transition from retribution to rehabilitation? I think you can Google that yourself. You, it's, it's your test. You have to. Um, that's a rhetorical question. Thank you. Thank you. We thank the honorable speaker from the opposition side and would like now to call upon the second speaker from the proposition. Uh, to start with, I'd like to pass some thanksgiving. First of all, I thank God for actually getting to this place. It is of great blessing to actually reach these heights. Thanking my family, my mom, dad, and siblings. Actually, my mom was there, but she went out. Uh, thanking the school at large, our teacher and coach, Theo, who is there. My fellow debate club members also who are there and the school administration at large that is represented by the director of studies who also is sitting there. It means a lot in everyone's life to get to new heights and get to success. Winning to me felt, felt and will always feel like a whole dream coming true. Today is a new experience to have and it is a great honor to be part of this experience. With that said, let me start. Let me have to first engage with, with side opposition. Do you all agree that we need a better future for a society? We do. Great. Do you all agree that we are going to uh, have that better society by reducing crime rates? You do. Thank you. So by allowing that, they said you cannot change a criminal. But let me ask them a question. 1994 genocide. Rwanda was full of crimes and everything. But where Rwanda is right now, it's a rehabilitative country. Then if we can't change a criminal, where are they? What was happening back then is that people had to be rehabilitated, they had to first be taken out of the society and be taught and be put to social work and then they were reformed. Those same offenders, they are the same people that helped into rebuilding the country. So yes, it is very much possible to, to reform an offender. Convicting and punishing, help, helping the guilt to not to reoffending, how they are planned, uh, 
the question is, if we all agree where we want to go, now the, 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 the real question is, what way are we willing to get, to, take, to get there? A rehabilitative way or a retributive way? The retributive way is that way of which that brings harshness and negativity to the, offend, uh, to the one who offended with great hopes that they might change. But obviously, they don't. The United Kingdom, through its uh, Durham Constabulary, the state territorial police, it, sh it uh, shows the over prison population and it is a retributive country. And it shows that 90% of that of the population, they are mentally disturbed. Retribution, when it is practiced, it is literally ignorant. You don't know why this person did anything. What only matters is that they are out of the society. So there's this case in America that took place in 2000, whereby this person was convicted for first, first order, first uh, type murder for killing a police officer, but little did, did they know that this person was sick. After discovering that, after the sentence, the state government sentenced that person to that same punishment. Is it the better future we want for the society? But if Rwanda kept retributing people, where would we, where would we be right now? They talked also about rehabilitation centers being so expensive, but if they're so expensive and they change someone and they give a better future, then why not to be doing so? So, good people that had bad lives helped the society. Yes, it's fortunate that we have good people that actually had bad lives and helped people. But what about those who have bad lives and don't have any opportunity to help those, those people? Do we need to actually attribute them? They talked about USA, but USA, funny, it's one of the cases, it's one of the, it's one of the countries that have more of uh, crime rates, among which the, the rates they are reported to be out of, were reported to be from racism. UK, USA is having 2.2 million, according to the Justice Department, million prison population and most of them they are blacks don't we know how blacks are treated there only when you don't have money you are really discriminated like, there's discrimination and anything else so going back to our our arguments what's the impact of having rehabilitation actually as the primary aim of the criminal justice system there are three steps that you go through first is correction where we determine if this offender has to be taken out of the society then later after we go for 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 counseling and the counseling that's where we understand the real thing that happened we don't necessarily have to come in front of the person and then ask what why did you do this it's always that some people start what is investigation they investigate whatever that can lead to any information so as we get a better understanding on how to handle this case united states how they handle cases after being sentenced the offender has to cross fingers to where they have to they have to get them they, they, they pass a few hours discussing with you, choosing, are we getting you to a high security prison or less secured prison, of which they don't know if it has the well treatment for you. So if they have to cross fingers to get a well treatment, where is the better society? If we don't have the pardon and mercy for the current situation to make it better, can't we have mercy for the next generation? Because if we can't, because if you can't secure a better future today by working and rehabilitating, reforming each and everyone, then wh where are we going? Having rehabilitation, we're going, to, we are, we are going to be having uh, more people that are, are going to be reformed, and when they are reformed, they're going to be law binding members of the society. With that said, I raise my case. Uh, sorry. So, um, you talked about having mercy. So, are you trying to tell me if someone killed your loved one, you'd, you'd be happy, you f you'd feel happy if they were sent to a rehabilitation center and they didn't pay any fine, they didn't even suffer a bit? You, that's what you're trying to say, basically. It's not what I'm trying to say. Well, basically, wait, wait. What I'm trying to say today is that if someone killed my loved one, this person has to be handed. Uh, this person has to be taken to the to the criminal justice system, and the case has to be handled. This person has to. We have to be having a reason why this person killed. We have to be having a reason why this person did that, and make sure this person won't do that again. And we honestly have. We honestly won't have this person. Uh, being reformed after imprisoning them for 25 years because when they come they are really more prone to actually come and kill my other loved one so if I have no assurance that what I'm doing it will reform that and will actually remove what was happening wait I'm still answering the question if I have no assurance of which retribution does not then why actually go with it so if I'm taking this person to the cre a fine will a fine actually will a fine bring back my loved one it won't but rehabilitation will make sure that he won't kill anyone else but would the fine actually bring my, my will I will I actually feel, feel feel good? This literally shows that retribution focuses on the past. This person killed. This person has to give the fine. But what about after giving the fine and we proceed with something else? What if I'm rich? Then I kill you, and then I kill somebody else's loved one. And the, I get, will I keep giving funds? 
What if I bring this money and everything? Will I keep giving funds? Thank you it's so not much. always about too much. You've been talking about um, securing a better future. What are you doing to account for the crimes that are happening right now? Thank you. What I'm doing to the crimes that are happening right now, it always comes into a common, a common understanding. A same study was done in the UK showing that sentencing 1% more people to retribution saves the next year's cases of property offenses to 2,619. You are still talking the, wait, about wait, the wait, 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 wait. But for rehabilitation, for the rehabilitation, sentencing one more person to rehabilitation saves 3,469 cases for property offenses. So if we can save cases, then why not? Still talking about the future and not what you're going to do to account for the crimes that happen today. The crimes that are happening today, they're happening today. And honestly, you can't have an everybody on eye, but what we have to make sure on is that these crimes are not actually happening again. At least if they happen, the rate decreases. It's all, it's all of what we were willing, right? They all agree that we want a better future and that we are decreasing cr crime rates. But what will it be necessary? I mean, closing... My mother was actually here, but she went out. But there's this funny story. I had this behavior of being stubborn. Six morning, I was out of home. No, no one knew where I was. And the same punishment was that I was beaten. She could testify she was there. But from the first time I was beaten until the last time I didn't change, Monday I was beaten, Tuesday I was not home. Well, but till wait, but till she took but till she took me down and I actually sat down and told me what you're actually doing is not good. Maybe your kid could do it the next time. Believe it or not, I didn't repeat that. Because actually got the if the, to take responsibility of what I did and knew that actually my mother is being worried. So if that was an offense, I didn't reoffend. But if I was being imposed harshness that was equal to the worry she had, because the harshness they find their meaning, it is really directly proportional to the feeling they have of the crime. So if the feeling can't actually save anything that we have today and tomorrow, then why going with retribution? Actually, what's the, what's the essence of having, of having retribution? I rest my case. To thank the second speaker from the proposition side and call upon the second speaker of the opposition side. Thank you so much. Um, I would actually first thank like the others did, but um, allow me um, to apologize um, for maybe the way my first speaker was a little bit harsh to the other side. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davin. I'm the second speaker from the opposition side. To begin with what the precarious speaker said, allow me to use your mother again, if you will. The first thing the mother did was to punish him. Like, that was the primary thing the mother did. Clearly showing that everyone always spare the road and spoil the child. They talked about a better society. How do you have a better society with no justice? Ladies and gentlemen, psychoposition is clearly showing us that they are not accounting for justice. The topic of today, the motion of today, criminal justice. Justice for the victim and the offender. Ladies and gentlemen, proposition, this is the beam of justice. This is the victim. This is the offender. Once crime is committed, it is now like this. The offender goes up. The the victim is down. So what justice does, it brings them back to this level. And does rehabilitation really do that? Giving, giving the offender a beautiful life, an Ivy League prison, is it really achieving justice? Now that is what side opposition is going to show you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, they talked about, um, they keep on talking about the, the United States and how the United States has a high criminal rate and everything like that. Now we are going to show you that rehabilitation cannot indeed work in um, the United States because of its high criminal rates. I'll get to that. And um, they talked about um, does retribution help Af Afghanistan? This is a country that already, just like my first speaker said, it is difficult to bring rehabilitation, to apply it into such countries. Why? Because they are not rehabilitation does not account for justice. And these are countries that citizens actually normally take um, justice into their own hands. We're going to look at that. Moral injustice, because if I see that I've not gotten justice for the crime that was done towards me, I'm going to take it into my own hands. So countries like Af Afghanistan cannot actually do this. Um, they, they keep on talking about how rehabilitation is a long term. But jury, we're going to show you how rehabilitation is actually not a long term goal. Um, there's a lot that was said. There's a lot that was said. They, they talked about revenge. Um, retribution is not revenge, it is justice, which is the motion of today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we brought our framework to side proposition and to the jury. Our framework was, is rehabilitation applicable? And second, does it achieve the goals of the motion today? Does it achieve the goals of the criminal justice? Clearly, first, it does not convict and punish the criminal, which is one of the goals of the criminal justice. Second, it does not protect the victim, the victim which is the society. It does not protect um, the victim, the innocent, the one that has, that has been um, committed crime against. And third, it does not reduce recidivism. Transparency.com shows that the three major causes of recidiv recidivism um, 
excuse me, I'll get those. The three major causes of recidivism are criminal history. I mean, if I've been known as a murderer, I'm going to do that again. And rehabilitation does not solve that because rehabilitation has no measurement. It has no basis. How do you know? Even a doctor, they were talking about doctors. Doctors cannot know that a patient will not fall sick again. It is according to the body of, the, of, 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 the, of that patient. And what we are seeing today is not um, if patients are going to change or what, is justice, criminal justice, the three goals of the, of the, of the criminal justice. Um, age and geographical environment and so on. They talked about Norway. Norway's, the reason why Norway has a low crime rate is not solely based on rehabilitation. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Norway, Norway achieved, um, I mean, Norway got into the rehabilitation system um, in the 1980s. But even before this, Norway had already uh, registered low crime rates. That means it was already having low crime rates. And then, even, even so, Norway has a strict gun law. That means guns are not allowed in Norway. That, that could also um, contribute to the reason why it has low crime rates. Um, Norway has long winters, which, um, according to transparency.com, these are also other reasons why Norway... Um, has low crime rates. So ladies and gentlemen, what we are looking at in the long, in the long run is rehabilitation really applicable? When you look at um, countries where rehabilitation was introduced and the citizens, the victims felt like they were not receiving the exact justice that they needed for the crimes that were committed against them. When you look at Mexico, there was over um, a 30 increase of, uh, 30% of the citizens were taking justice into their own hands. Why? Because they felt like they were not, they were not receiving the justice that they actually needed, needed. When you look at the Philippines, this is where um, citizens are hiring and employed to kill criminals because they feel like the government is not doing enough in bringing justice to the people. So ladies and gentlemen, in the long run, we are evaluating criminal justice. Its goals, retribution holds the criminal accountable. Second, it stops reoffending. How does retribution stop reoffending? Every time prisoners get into prison, there is this thing of when you're in a four-walled room, you, I know, you gain your conscience in a certain way. Rather than being taken to rehabilitation, we do not know whether you're going to change. We do not know um, what actually caused, we do not know what actually caused um, you to get into all that. And, uh, and then um, protecting the innocent, which is actually justice. Has the victim received? Okay. Um, so, uh, the fact that the doctor has no assurance that, it, um, that the patient is going to be okay, that means mm -hmm. they should not get any treatment. Thank you so much. Just like the, fr just like the precarious speaker had said, the first thing the mother did was punish. You first punish. A court holds the criminal responsible and then treat. We do not say we do not want rehabilitation. We want it as a secondary aim. As long as it has not proved that it's going to work as a primary aim, which was a burden to the proposition, to say that it can work as a primary aim, they have not proved that because re rehabilitation has no basis of change. You cannot know if someone has changed. The person will commit crime over and over again. Now, why can't you first give justice to society? Why can't you give justice to the society that they are trying to better? Is actually a society that is going to have more riots because they are not receiving justice. In the long run, they are not actually... Their main aim was in the long run. In the long run, we're going to see all countries taking justice into their hands because they have... You are a mother. They have killed your five children. And... The criminal... Listen, wait. The criminal has been taken to rehabilitation, to an Ivy League prison. What, what justice? How do you feel? How do you feel? I mean, yes, my children have died. And instead of the person serving at least 20 years and receive, I have that satisfaction that they have been retributed. They are instead taken to Question. education, entertainment, like nowhere prisons. Talking about my case, mm -hmm. if before I was stopped beating, nothing changed. What was the aim of beating me? Before? Before, before they stopped beating me, nothing changed. Then what was the aim of beating me? Just like I say, do you know, do you know the courts pair the road and spoil the child? Yeah. Okay, when you were in class, when you, when you did something wrong, your teacher and your teacher beat you, would you ask him, teacher, why have you beaten me? You accept the beating because as long as you cannot see how severe something is, the only way you can solve a solution in society, the only way you can address wrong is by showing how severe the punishment you're going to get is. If you show me that if you do wrong, I'll take you to, I'll take you to Harvard. I'm going to Question. do wrong. Question. What if that student you want to beat is more stronger than you and you can't really beat that student? Will you let that, that kid I take them to higher institutions. What if they can't? Still, as long as, I, as long as I have achieved the goal of justice, as long as I have achieved the goal, then things can come after. I can have to look at rehabilitation, but I have to first give what is needed, which is justice. So, 
Is it clear that you are giving us to this house that we first have an aim that won't serve to anything, then later bring no. something serious? The motion today was criminal justice. Helping the offender, sorry, helping the offender is not achieving justice. It is not achieving any of the goals of the criminal justice. Okay. That is why the status quo okay, is the way it is. How, you say that you can't measure the changes of rehabilitation. How you, do you cannot. Ch the changes of retribution. That is not our primary aim. Our primary aim in retribution. No, our primary aim in retribution is not change. Our primary aim is justice. Justice. What is justice to you? Deservingness or what is I just, better for the I just, I just explained to you what justice is. The victim and the offender. If what you rehabilitation have, if you does. If you the opportunity to change a criminal, would you take it? I would. As a secondary aim, I would first give them what they need. No, why are you, why are you, I said as a secondary aim, I first accord to them what they needed for the crime they committed. Thank you. We would like now to call upon the third speaker from the proposition side. Uh, before I start my speech, um, I would like to thank everyone that is here, everyone that uh, is present. Um, thank you for your support, and I would also like to thank my family, my school, and everyone who helped me reach where I am right now. Yeah, and I would start my speech now. So, uh, my name is Umulinga Perfect. I'm the third speaker from the proposition side. Today's motion says that this house believes that the primary aim of the criminal justice system should be rehabilitation and not retribution. So what did the motion of today require both sides to do? It required both sides to prove to the panel why rehabilitation or retribution is best fit as the primary aim in accordance to the safety of the whole system. We're talking about the offender, uh, we're talking about the victim, and the society at large, because the fact that well, we are, we, are, we are talking about a criminal justice system that does not remove the fact that the offender is actually a part of the society. <clears throat> so as an opposition, we're able to convince the panel by answering the, the, the questions. But I'll first talk about what my first speaker talked about. He showed you how rehabilitation works. The fact that rehabilitation there is there does not remove the fact that people are going to be actually uh, punished for what they actually did. But we want to punish people knowing what they did. Uh, we do not just want to aim. Uh -huh. You talked about uh, mm, his parents punishing the student. The first thing uh, he uh, did was to punish. But what did the mother aim at? It was to restore the person. That is to rehabilitate. That was their first aim. The first aim was not to punish the person. So that is what we're having wrong. And we showed you that rehabilitation is a process. We are talking about corrective measures. We're talking about social work. We're also talking about counseling. Hey, what does correction, what, what does correction do? do? It makes, uh, mm, it gives uh, the offender the, uh, the exact the exact punishment he or she deserves. But we want to punish people with actually knowing. We, have, we go through these three steps. What, uh, we know and understand the crime. We understand the root cause of the crime. And we decide the best option in order to resolve the problem. We do not just, how can you, how can you expect? You're talking about someone who killed people. How about the drug, drug addicts? Taking them to a prison is not going to stop the fact that they're going to go back and take the drugs again. You're only talking about those, uh, to actually remind you, 53% of people in prisons are nonviolent uh, non criminals. So these nonviolent people. You're just going to punish them and you do not actually understand. We gave you a case study, a case study of the black neighborhoods. These people are facing the problem of racism. They do not, they're not given jobs. They're going to be given, the, the, um, they face a lot of problems in society. And this is why they engage in these, uh, these crimes. You taking them to uh, prisons and uh, your first aim is punishing them, then that means you not actually solve the problem. Because the moment they go out, they are uh, they're eventually going to steal because you're not, they're, not help, they're not being helped. The problem, the... <coughs> The moment they get out of prison, still they're going to do the same thing. Uh, they're going to they're going to do the same things. They're going to steal because they do not still have the money. They're going to do all these things that they eventually made them go back to prison. So you're not actually helping these people. You're talking about the criminal justice system. We talked about Norway, and then you came and told us that the demographics. Yeah, we know that U.S. and Norway have different demographics. They have different history, but. Uh, we told you we compared the, the criminal justice system. We did not compare the countries. And uh, <coughs> we were able to show you. We were able to show you how retribution and rehabilitation differ. We were able to show you how retributive justice system is driven by vengeance, while rehabilitation claims that justice does not aim at vengeance instead of the welfare of the society. 
Uh, we gave you an example of Norway. We gave you an example of how Rwanda adopted a rehabilitative, um, uh, rehabilitative criminal justice. And see where Rwanda is now. We know Dumyad Gwanda because of the rehabilitative uh, measures. We know so many different things. And you, you told us what is the credibility. We have seen people from uh, those people who committed genocide being changed into better people. But the, the, uh, the retributive system did that. No, it didn't do that. And um, <coughs> we showed you the impact of this system. We showed you it to be, uh, to be reducing your offending rate, combating ignorance, long-term sustainability. As I conclude, yes, we have to respect people's need for vengeance, but not use that as a foundation for a criminal justice system. As a former prisoner uh, of uh, <coughs> Norway said, if we have created a holiday camp uh, for criminals, so what? We should reduce the risk of reoffending because if we don't, what is the whole point of punishment except leaning towards the primitive side of humanity? Thank you, Pat um, Thank you very much. Um, you talked about um, rehabilitation, achieving the goals, um, I mean, giving justice to the victim and the offender. How does rehabilitation bring justice to the victim? Because it, uh, it reduces the fact, uh, mean, um, uh, the offender, yeah. To the victim, to the sufferer of wrong. We, but we showed you that rehabilitation also acquires justice because we showed you it has oh. the first thing as corrective. And the corrective measures, it refers corrective to also measures to the justice. Or to the victim. Both of them, obviously, how, to be given. How does it bring justice if to the you, victim? Okay, let me explain to you. you don't, maybe you do not understand the corrective measures. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about corrective measures. We, are also, we also take people to prison if they did something wrong. So but you, you want to take to pe people to prison, to prison knowing the reasons why they're going there. Do you, do you understand the meaning of a victim, the innocent? Yes, I do understand. Because if, um, um, if I was... Okay, how does, myself, rehabilitation, um, how does rehabilitation better criminals? Better criminals? How doesn't it even? We're teaching those people. Do you, know, do you know how many people are in jail just because of embezzlement? People do not, they are financially you literate. Are sure that they're going to because come we're and teaching them people. financial... We teach them different things in, uh, through rehabilitation. You and we told you rehabilitation is a process. It's not something that is done overnight. It's something that takes, we correct them, we give them social work, and then we cancel them. Those are three things you're not understanding. What is the rate of success? The rate of success. We showed you an example of Norway, which you're not able to show as the, pro as the opposition. And we have showed you that the major reason of recidivism in Norway is not rehabilitation. Okay, if you have a, if, uh, if you are, you're telling us that Norway, it, it already had, um, okay. the, uh, uh -huh. it already had a criminal rate, the criminal rate was no more, it was rate. low. But we showed you that the criminal rate before Norway adopted the rehabilitative measures, it was 50. And then now we unit up, the unit adopted, okay, third, the, it that. was 20%. Um, do you know the countries that have the lowest criminal rates in the world? Yeah, because I know Norway does have a small. No, a which countries have the lowest criminal rates? I'll inform you, there's Canada, Japan, Singapore, and all these use retribution. Are you sure if they I use the retribution? Absolutely what sure. is Even, let me ask you a, a really no, no, no. simple question. Uh, You're punishing someone, what are you aiming at? We and are aiming, aiming at showing oh, wait, them wait, that wait, what wait they did is wrong. Wait a bit. When you're punishing someone, do you aim at punishment? Or the first aim is to restore the person. You want to change the person, Our not to punish. Our primary aim is that they will know that what they did is wrong. Exactly. Do what? Rehabilitation. Thank you. You help them know the crime that they did through rehabilitation, no, 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 through no, no, no. counseling them Helping and knowing what they know did. Helping them by sentencing them to prison. By sentencing me not knowing what is the problem. I, you might just come here and you, I might kill a person and you don't even understand what is the reason why I kill this person. Meaning, I, maybe um, I have, I'm mentally themselves. ill. Thank you, thank you. Thank you too. Um, so you talked about someone with mental health issues. Yes. But you ignore the fact that these people are sent to mental health uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. And you as the retributive uh, criminal justice, whatever, what are you going to do to that person? Aren't you going to take them take to the prison? To, to prison? When they're being sentenced, we take into account whether they have any mental problems. No, you don't. Because yes, we do. No, you don't. Yes, we do. Because we showed any, you. Unless you've seen anyone being sentenced to jail or something. Then, then what, 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 what were the steps for you to actually reach there? It was to understand the crime, to... Um, uh, to um, to, uh, to understand the root cause and, the, and find the best option for that person. And that is rehabilitation. Thank you. We would like now to call upon the third speaker of the opposition team. Um, yeah, uh, I would first like to um, thank 
everybody that is here today, everybody that came to watch, the families that came to support their loved ones. Um, I would like to, so, to thank so much our guests and our friends from uh, Mother Mary and uh, everyone at large. So before I start, I would like to first remind um, the judges, the audience, and the proposition side that we are talking about having retribution as the primary aim and having um, uh, rehabilitation as a secondary aim, putting much emphasis on retribution and later thinking about reha re uh, rehabilitation. Um, I would first like to oppose what the proposition, my, the current speaker talked about. They talked about um, wanting to punish people for what they did. They kept repeating that over and over again. And that is basically what we're doing. When somebody has committed a crime, they're taking into court and the first um, their what is seen is either are they mentally ill should they go to prison should they be habilitated so that's the first thing that we see when somebody goes there and they're mentally ill they're taken to mental asylums when somebody needs rehabilitation first of all we need to account for the crime that has happened we can't only think about the future and not think about what is happening today when we think about what is happening today the person is being punished for the crime that they committed and then taken to rehabilitation to change them and reintegrate them into society um, they talked about um, uh, racism and uh, punishing the, the, the people because of the society they live in you cannot um, justify crime by the background of a person. If, if it was that, oh, many kids have been abused, many kids have been, um, uh, have went through very tough situations, but they still come out of the, uh, into society as good people. And that is why when somebody commits a crime, we should first account for the crime that has been committed by punishing them, which does not only has to be prison, it can be prison, it can be fines, it can be um, incapacitation and many different others. And that is why when we're talking about the goals of the criminal justice system, we talk about convicting and punishing the criminal, which is holding the criminal accountable for what they did. We talk about protecting the innocent, which is the victim and the society at large by removing the criminal from society and putting them into isolation or into even uh, other places to help them. And another thing is removing the, um, I mean helping the offender not to offend again. And that can be done by deterrence and incapacitation through retribution and then later help by changing them and reintegrate them into society. Um, what we have brought to the table today is, um, uh, is we showed that retribution is applicable as the primary aim um, uh, for the criminal justice system by showing that it achieves all the goals of the criminal justice system and actually helps us, the victim first because um, the, the, the justice is being served and the offender is being punished for what they did. It helps the criminal because they're being taken out, their conscience is working them, they know that they have done wrong and they know that there's punishment and consequence for what they did. And then it's helping the society by first removing the criminals, by preventing moral injustice where people take justice into their own hands because justice has not been served by rehabilitative centers and everything. And that is why we want primary aim to be retribution and then rehabilitation. Um, what uh, the proposition side brought to the table is first they talked about um, that the prime, they said that the primary aim is the thing that is most important, but the primary aim is not the thing that is most important. The primary aim is something that comes um, to actually achieve a goal. Our goal is to punish and then help the criminal. And you cannot help the criminal and then punish them later. And then they also talked about um, uh, rehabilitation being a process. We understand that it's a process, but we're not here to determine the processes that go into rehabilitation or retribution. We're here to understand whether retribution or rehabilitation achieves the aim of the criminal justice system, whether it achieves its goals, and whether it can be applicable as a primary aim. Um, they also talked about um, uh, genocide. What we don't understand here is the genocide in Rwanda happened. People died. There were many criminals. The first thing that they considered is, can we imprison them? When they found out they, could, uh, they couldn't imprison everybody, clearly there were other alternatives that came in later, but the primary aim was to punish them. Some of them are still imprisoned now, and we understand that they were helped. But that helping came as a result of helping them reconcile with the society and actually helping their, their problem with the backgrounds. Um, uh, here, uh, our impact, the impact of our arguments show that um, our arguments... Uh, our arguments uh, show that uh, retribution can be applicable as a primary aim, and it actually helps the society at large, the victim and the criminal, which we are considering today. Thank you. Any questions? So we have some questions. If the society knows the rules and the society knows that this, if I do this, will be wrong and they still do that, why is it so? 
uh, here we're talking about the criminal, the offender, and the victim. When a criminal is not punished according to whatever they did, and the society sees that and sees that justice has not been served, they decide to take justice into their own hands, and that is why village vigilantes come in, and that is why cases in, like in Uganda where they burn people because they have stolen or they have committed other crimes. That is clearly showing that people are taking justice into their own hands because they're believing that taking somebody to a rehabilitative center is not good enough to serve justice, both for all for the victim, the criminal, and the society. Is it a problem of a criminal justice system to reoffend, or a problem of retribution, or it's a problem of the government? We're not talking here about the government. We're not talking about whether um, the criminal justice is flawed. We're talking about retribution and rehabilitation being the primary aim. Who exercises retribution and rehabilitation? Sorry? Who exercises retribution and rehabilitation? Retribution and rehabilitation is done by the three stakeholders of the criminal justice system, which is the authorities, the community, and the jury. And is it that, what authority is there else other than the government? The police. Where is the police located? <laughs> We are not here to talk about where Thank the police you. is located. If you can Google it yourself, then do it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you believe that there are circumstances that drive criminal behavior? Yes, we do, but so we clearly what is see. The we clearly of excuse me. Let me answer your question. We clearly see that, that, that crime is not pathology, just nor of is it a circumstance of coincidence. It's a, it's a it's a result of choice. The criminal has chosen to to commit a crime and should be then held accountable and then helped according to their background. Uh -huh. So, uh, did Rwanda actually aim at punishment or it aimed at restoring its country? They did aim at restoring their country, but not through rehabilitation, by also punishing and holding the criminal accountable. Sorry. What, 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 or what was the future that the current government, the, the back then government wanted for Rwanda? Sorry? What was the future that the government back then wanted for Rwanda? They clearly wanted a better country. Then what did they do? they retributed and rehabilitated. So you're gonna tell me that all the criminals, you're gonna tell me that all the criminals from the genocide were all re rehabilitated and not retributed at all. Could you prove that? Wait, could you prove that to we this house? We can prove that all, most of the criminals from the genocide are still in prison right now, and even those that came out were rehabilitated it, later. That is a statement, could you prove that? Could you, then Google it yourself and find statistics. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Thank you. It is quite a hot one, and from uh, the faces of the people here, it's going to be tough uh, to decide who takes this one home. So, judges, take it away as we see or hear the reply speeches from uh, both sides. Judges. Thank you. Uh, we'd like now to call upon the reply speaker from the opposition side. Uh, and you reminded that you have three minutes. Um, allow me bring it to our notice, jury and audience, that the proposition was actually debating on assumption today. Proposition talked about how they, how they want a better future, but clearly opposition brought it out better that in the long run, retribution is that that was providing that better future. We looked at the society, we looked at the victim, looked at the offender. Proposition only looked at the offender tackled less on the victim, and the society, we showed that re rehabilitation in the long run was not going to be bettered by rehabilitation. We showed how justice was going to be taken into the, uh, into the hands of the society, and it was going to increase the riots and whatnot. So rehabilitation did not really show us how, which we believe was their framework, a better future was not going to be achieved by rehabilitation, because first, they were not tackling the motion, which was criminal justice, bringing justice to the victim, the society, and to the offender. Ladies and gentlemen, the second thing, we gave them our burden. Up to now, I, I don't know if it's going to be brought up in the reply speech, but it was not tackled. Um, we showed them how the criminal justice had three goals. They did not tackle any of that. Um, Side proposition. Side proposition asked for proof on the genocide. We, we say we do not have that proof. But throughout the whole debate, I do not hear any source of the proposition. We brought to the table at least transparency.com, if I'm to remember. But throughout the whole debate, unless um, my ears didn't work well, I did not hear any resources brought um, by side proposition. Um, something that came out throughout the whole debate um, was the mother of one of the speakers. And 
we continue to say what was the first instinct that came into the mother's brain was to punish, which is the actual cause of, which is the actual aim of the criminal justice, to punish and then rehabilitate and then create a better society. We as side opposition believe that rehabilitation needs to work with retribution, but what is the primary aim? What is the primary thing that the criminal justice wants? Achieving justice for all, for a brighter future, for a better future, a better future for the criminal since they're going to be rehabilitated as a secondary aim and a, be a better future for the society. And then um, to end all this, Ladies and gentlemen, we shall realize um, that side opposition, side opposition was able to show that first of all, retribution is applicable as it is a status quo, and it is achieving the goals of the criminal justice, which was, the, which was today's motion. What should be the primary aim of the criminal justice? It cannot be the primary aim if it is not achieving the goals of something. And the primary aim is what that thing aims at doing. It is bringing justice, justice to the whole society, which in the long run is actually achieving that brighter future for both the victim, the society, and the offender in the long run. Thank you. We would like now to call upon the reply speaker from the proposition side. Today's debate was basically on the fact whether rehabilitation should be the first M or retribution should be the first M. They brought up retribution saying that they convict the crime, the, 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 there is conviction protecting the victim and all of that. And they were, pro they were constantly proclaiming that they are, pro they, they, they are actually working on each and every one and bringing justice to the society. But if we are able to reduce recidivism, of which they fail to show that retribution actually reduces it, reoffending rates, then isn't that protection? That is justice. True justice is to make sure that the offender is held accountable of what they've, do, they've done and make, sh and, make sure that, and make sure that they won't do it again. But what they are bringing as justice is to make sure that they sleep and sit knowing that the offender is suffering as much as possible. Then what about the mentality and the cause that led to that? They don't know that, which is ignorance that is in retrib retribution, but which is not in rehabilitation. Retribution... Which, uh, uh, they, took, they talked about the first aim and the first, but to what we both want as two sides is the better future of the society. And uh, it's, it's uh, by reducing the crimes. But if they, were, they didn't bring in any way that retribution decreases the crimes, then what justice do we have if it can't lead us to where we want to go? They've been using my case and everything that the parent actually first started on retribution. If retribution, it is being used as a first aim, and in every case, it doesn't yield productivity. Why should it be as the primary aim for justice? If justice used has to be yielding impact. Rehabilitation corrects councils and gives social work, and all of that brings accountability to the offender and makes the offender be held accountable of what they've been doing. And through all of that, they are sure to not reoffend, as we gave a lot of... Uh, a lot of statistics showing that the, about the case of no, actually there is a 30% reduction of your offending rates, of which they didn't bring any statistics showing that what countries they, they, they had anything else and retribution is helping. Rehabilitation, rehab, rehabilitation takes, handles the whole case because it makes sure that anyone having mental illness or any other problem makes, uh, knows that what we want and what they've done is not true and they won't do it again. Today, the main aim of the criminal justice system is to give a better future and, uh, to, by reducing crimes. But the justice we need to give, both two sides, is the justice that will build justice that will, will actually br bring something more productivity to involve the society. But if retribution doesn't, then why make it the first aim? If retribution is the first aim, it doesn't. Why should we actually have retribution when it doesn't yield more effects, when it doesn't decrease the rates of crimes as we want? So if we do not decreasing the rate of the crimes, there is no need of having a criminal justice system. Let's get to know the necessity of decreasing the rates of crimes. And as we all agree, it's for a better future. So if there is no decrease in crimes, there is no better future. There is, there is no way of a criminal justice system. So, to conclude, there are two impacts. They clearly brought no impact, basically destroying the rehabilitation. But what we want today is what justice will build a society to a sustainable, to, to a long sustainability. And what is more practicable, as we have shown, rehabilitation is more practicable because it exactly protects the society by reducing crimes, as I've showed through various uh, statistics. With that said, I rest my case. You guys have done a great job. Uh, I would like to ask the audience to give them a very 
a big round of applause one more time. <laughs> this was a very heated debate. Uh, um, on our side, as the judges, uh, it was really uh, unclear before, uh, but uh, we're just gonna give just some general feedback about what uh, we think went on here. Uh, okay, so um, for me, um, with the proposition, they uh, defined, uh, sorry, yeah, that's the proposition. Yeah, they defined uh, the, main, uh, the main terms, and that's uh, retribution, uh, criminal justice, uh, sorry, justice system, yeah, and, uh, and rehabilitation. And uh, we were kind of uh, also hoping for a boundary. Uh, I think we wanted to know if it's, uh, is it going to be, I, I, are you talking about the whole world? Or would you like to keep it like just a particular region, maybe Rwanda or this? And it kind of left the debate really open. Uh, so most of what um, I heard from the proposition was uh, that uh, re retribution is very harsh and it doesn't bring down crime. Uh, rec uh, recidivism uh, being high, especially in the U.S., proving that uh, none of uh, none of what is being done with retribution is actually working. And um, yeah, so uh, and that the main goal is uh, what's best for society. Exactly right. And so from the opposition, uh, they did uh, define uh, what they think uh, should be uh, should be done, what the goals are for um, for the justice system, and how the uh, how retribution actually uh, contributes to that. Uh, they also asked the proposition uh, how they, they they also told the opposition that rehab is very expensive and that um, crime is not only is, 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 is accounted for by uh, uh, history and uh, geography and uh, most of it, I'm not gonna go through everything, but um, from uh, what I would like to give as feedback is that uh, the debate uh, was, uh, the debate was open uh, until maybe by the second speeches and uh, it gave us a clear picture of what either sides were talking about. And uh, whatever comes at the verdict, um, really, uh, I, I really enjoyed this and uh, uh, really proud of either teams. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. For me, I'll just give a very um, quick sum up. I personally have enjoyed uh, judging this debate uh, three pillars was the crime, the offender, and the victim. And I've seen uh, both teams trying to show us how justice could be served as per their side. So uh, the only thing I've seen here was uh, that the proposition, uh, the, the, there is one thing that uh, was raised by the second speaker from the opposition, where she was trying to show us that uh, the main aim which was being advocated by the opposition was uh, to convict, to protect the innocent uh, victim and to like help the criminal change, that which would now come as the rehabilitation. and. Uh, to me, that one was uh, like that's where I felt like the opposition was not really fitting into uh, the general uh, uh, picture which they were trying to portray, leave, leaving behind the innocent who have been the the, vic the victim. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to both teams. Uh, I, I wanted to also convey that I really, really enjoyed this debate. Uh, you all had very strong arguments, which you were able to uh, put forward in a very articulate manner. Uh, it, it was really enjoyable. Uh, I just have some uh, 
also very general comments. Of course, all three of us judges are still here. Uh, should uh, any of you want uh, to, to receive uh, more personalized feedback. But I would say that uh, some of the things uh, uh, I would hope for both teams to work on in the future, uh, one, uh, for the proposition side, you did a really good job of uh, defining the motion, uh, especially the keywords. But uh, I hope that you will be able to, uh, going forward, go a little bit further and explain your vision for the motion. Yes, we know what criminal justice means and rehabilitation and retribution, but with your, within your view of, 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 of this debate, what exactly are you advocating for? Is it rehabilitation alone? Is it punishment that takes into account rehabilitation or is it punishment and then rehabilitation we were not able to 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 see that really come in, come to light very very clearly uh, another thing uh, is now the the question of the examples that we use right uh, of course in debate silence is consent so if they're not addressed by the other team then as judges we we, we, we leave it the way it is, but uh, you used a lot of examples, the opposition team trying to argue for your, for your side. Uh, for example, talking about citizens taking justice into their own hands whenever they feel like uh, justice not, is not being served as it should. The argument was against rehabilitation, but you use countries like Uganda, like the Philippines, countries that actually use a retributive justice system. It wasn't addressed by the proposition, but I would just want to say that, you know, going forward, really be sure about the examples that you're giving. Uh, thirdly, uh, I would really avoid going forward using personal examples as uh, arguments or a support for your argument. Uh, the, th the second speaker, uh, talked about his uh, experience growing up and being punished for his mis mischief, misdeeds. We'll, we're not going to call it crimes. <laughs> uh, and uh, for the rest of the debate, that was a really contentious point. You know, literally every other speaker that came after came back to that point. But really, it should have just been pointed out that the argument itself was not valid for this debate, <laughs> you know. But we spent so much time talking about the merits and demerits of his being punished. But since it is not an argument that can be supported by clear evidence that can be presented to us, it shouldn't have been an argument in the first place, right? So those are things I hope that you, the teams are going to work on in the future. But I would once again say that this was a very enjoyable debate. And uh, uh, whoever wins, I would like to say to the team that will not be able to win that uh, this is in no way a reflection on your capabilities as debaters. It just so happens that there has to be a winner and uh, a second place, <laughs> right? But uh, uh, I really hope that you love the bet too much to let it go because of one loss, right? Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, very shortly, you will get to know who won this round, who is the IDBET TV debate champion of 2022. Right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Judge uh, Bruce, you may know him as the Combs uh, dude. Now, we have come to the end of uh, this grand finale of the I Debate TV Championship. It was a nice ride. The two teams uh, have debated, they have spoken, uh, and the judges have heard. And uh, very shortly, we'll get to uh, hear the verdict. Is it going home uh, to Mother Mary or uh, rather to Grody Academy? Now. Hello, from behind. Thank you. So now we're going to call Adelf Rugundana to come and help us um, present the um, TV debate award. Hello, everyone.
everyone. Um, I am Adele Frugondana, like she just said, and I work at iDebate. And I joined iDebate last year in October. Uh, I was introduced to iDebate by my sister, Loan Miza, who is a beloved member of the organization. Um, coming to this journey, I was excited about the endless opportunities that iDebate provided. I was a witness to the impact that the organization had, and I could not wait to be part of it. And for that, I thank Jean-Michel and the team. Um, during the first few weeks working for iDebate, I was assigned to coordinate and lead teams for the debate tournaments. One of the highlights of my journey was leading the TV debate series, uh, which some of you had the opportunity to, win, to witness earlier today. It was a long journey working alongside very bright students and hard working team. Um, I, would, I believe it would be an understatement to say that iDebate is an impact driven organization. We calculate ma our progress to minds and transform and smiles formed as a realization that the future is bright. Uh, the iDebate TV Championship is our new program that was initiated to increase the platform and visibility that we give to our students. Uh, in partnership with RBA, we broadcasted a debate episode every week on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on KC2 TV. We started this program with 16 schools that were chosen in Kigali, our best eight schools in Kigali, and our best schools, eight best schools in Eastern Province, uh, we, through different knockout stages. And today, we had our finals. So, um, therefore, I would like to call the two teams that were in the finals today with us, Glory Academy and Mother Mary. Please come on stage. All right, um, thank you very much. Uh, this is the moment that we've ha we've ha we have been waiting for since last year, December. So we're about to announce the winner of the TV debate, I debate TV debate championship of 2022. So I hope the DJ is ready. Um, and the winner is. So at iDebate, no one is a loser. So we'd like to also thank Gloria Cat. of applause for the winners, please. Let's, uh, let's take just one minute or two at most to hear from you and uh, <laughs> hear your thoughts. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I guess little of us know the school, Mother Mary. Um, I think 
I think this is like Mother Mary's first experience in debate, and it is really good that um, at least our first championship is um, on the anniversary. I really thank God for that. Um, I thank God so much, so much, oh my God, for this trophy. I think it's Mother Mary's first debate trophy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it's really an inspiration. It is an inspiration. Um, I thank God so much for the team that always um, follows us, the debaters. And I really feel like they're going to um, step in the footsteps of um, those that are going before them and after them. Um, yeah, and then I thank God so much for I debate. I don't know, I'm thanking God so much, but yes, I thank God so much. I thank God so much for iDebate for giving us this platform. Um, I really wanted to say this while I was sitting there. Um, so I went to Faraway. And at Faraway, I don't know, I just felt like I was not being given the platform that I needed. Like, not because we were losing a lot, but like, I don't know. Like, I just felt like I wasn't being seen. So I really thank God for, um, he knew, okay, I thank God and I debate, um, for he knew that um, this is the time. Yeah. Um, on the anniversary, um, I thank our teachers, I think our coach, Teacher Sab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And lastly, lastly, uh, all of us would thank Jean Michel. For me personally, I see Jean Michel at church. I don't think he knows that. But like, you know, seeing someone helping people, helping the youth build, you know, careers and build themselves, and seeing him also in church preach is a double inspiration.